Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about different types of profit and profit maximization. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is the two different types of profit that you need to know. The first type is called accounting profit. Our second type of profit is called economic profit and that one is going to be more important within this class. Now when it comes to calculating accounting profit, we are going to be taking the total revenue that a firm earns. Remember we've already learned that's the price of the product times the quantity sold. And then we're going to subtract from that the explicit costs of running the business. These explicit costs are both fixed and variable. It's the amount of money that the entrepreneur pays out of their pocket for producing the good or service that they're selling. Now when it comes to calculating the economic profit, we still take the total revenue and subtract the explicit costs, but we will also subtract the implied or implicit costs as well. The implicit cost is the lost money that the entrepreneur could have earned had they not made the product. Essentially, it's the value of the opportunity cost that the entrepreneur has. In this class, when we use the term normal profit, we mean that economic profit is zero. And when a firm is earning a normal profit, the accounting profit will be equal to the implicit cost. Let's say, for example, a teacher quits teaching to open up their own restaurant. Let's assume that their previous salary was $50,000. Their explicit fixed costs are $10,000. Their variable explicit costs are $12,000, all while their total revenue for their restaurant is $30,000, we can calculate this teacher's accounting profit by taking the total revenue and subtracting the explicit costs, both the fixed and the variable. That gives us $30,000 minus the $10,000 plus the $20,000, bringing us to $8,000 of accounting profit for this entrepreneur that used to be a teacher. Now, if we wanted to calculate the economic profit for this former teacher, we are going to take the $8,000 of accounting profit and subtract the $50,000 of implicit cost. That's the money this entrepreneur could have earned had they still been a teacher. So this restaurant owner is earning negative $42,000 of economic profit. That is a huge economic loss, despite the accounting profit. If a fast food worker, on the other hand, quits their job to become a YouTuber, let's say they have a previous income of $35,000 a year while working as a fast food worker, they have an explicit fixed cost of $5,000 for their YouTube channel, they have a variable cost of $3,000 for their YouTube channel, and a total revenue for being a YouTuber of $48,000. Their accounting profit, once again, is the total revenue minus the explicit costs, both fixed and variable, bringing us to a total of $40,000 worth of accounting profit for this YouTuber. If we take that accounting profit and subtract the implied cost of $35,000 from their previous job, that brings us to an economic profit of $5,000. That means this YouTuber is earning more than they did as a fast food worker, which is their next best alternative. Finally, we have one more example. Let's say that a housekeeper quits their job to open up a house cleaning service. This entrepreneur had a previous income of $38,000. This business has an explicit fixed cost of $1,000. They have an explicit variable cost of $10,000 and a total revenue of $49,000. The accounting profit for this entrepreneur is the $49,000 of total revenue minus the $10,000 explicit variable cost and $1,000 of explicit fixed costs, bringing us to $38,000 of accounting profit. If we go ahead and subtract the $38,000 from the accounting profit, that gives us $0 of economic profit. That means this housekeeper turned entrepreneur is earning a normal profit and they are breaking even. And you'll notice that breaking even is not necessarily a bad thing. It means that your accounting profit is equal to your next best alternative. In this case, being a housekeeper. I'd like to point out that you could have both explicit and implicit variable and fixed costs. But if it's not in the question, it doesn't exist. So keep that in mind if you see these questions on your exam. Next, we're going to be talking about profit maximization for a firm. We're looking at how much output a firm should produce given their costs and revenue. If we take a look at a graph right here, here we have a total revenue curve for a firm in a competitive market and we have the total cost curve as well. Now this is all the costs, both the implicit and explicit fixed costs and variable costs. 
Whenever the total cost is greater than the total revenue, those are the quantities where the firm will earn economic losses. At the quantities where the total cost equals the total revenue, that's where the firm is breaking even or earning zero economic profit. And when the total cost is less than the total revenue, that's where we see economic profits. Now finding that profit maximizing quantity can be tricky when you're looking at this graph, but it's the place where the total revenue is greater than the total cost by the largest amount. It's approximately right there. And this firm will profit maximize if it produces QF as their quantity of output. But you should already know that most decisions are not made based on totals. In microeconomics, decisions are made at the margin. And that's going to be true most of the time for profit maximization as well. So when it comes to finding profit maximization, this is again going to be an application of marginal analysis that you learned back in unit one. Remember, benefit maximization is found where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. It's so important, it's the formula on my hat right there. Now when it comes to profit maximization for an individual firm, you're not going to see marginal benefit. And that's because the marginal benefit for a firm is not called marginal benefit. A firm's benefit for producing more units of output is the revenue they earn for selling that output. And here we're looking at marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is found by finding the change in the total revenue divided by the change in quantity. It's essentially the revenue a firm brings in for producing one more unit of output. And since the change in quantity will almost always be just one, we can usually just find the change in total revenue to find the marginal revenue. And so the profit maximizing quantity of output will always be found where MR equals MC. So that's where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Next, we're gonna look at how to find that profit maximizing quantity of output. Here we have a graph, we have a marginal revenue curve and a marginal cost curve. This is a graph for a perfectly competitive firm. You'll learn more about that in this unit. But on this graph, you can see that at low quantities, the marginal revenue is going to be greater than the marginal cost. If that's the case, the firm will increase profit if they continue to produce more units of output. At higher quantities of output, the marginal revenue will be less than the marginal cost. There, the firm is losing profit by continuing to produce. And so the profit maximizing quantity is found where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Here we have another graph that you will see in unit four. This is a graph for a monopoly. And once again, at low units of output, the marginal revenue for this quantity will be greater than the marginal cost for that quantity. And so continuing to produce more output will actually increase profit for this firm. At high quantities of output, we have the marginal revenue being less than the marginal cost. And there, continuing to produce actually decreases profit. And so, once again, finding the intersection between those two curves gives us the quantity where the marginal revenue equals the marginal cost. This is the profit maximizing or loss minimizing quantity for this firm. It cannot do any better than that quantity of output. Now let's take a look at finding profit maximization by the numbers. Here we have a firm's total cost and total revenue for different quantities of output. When it comes to numbers, the firm should produce as long as the marginal revenue is greater than or equal to the marginal cost, but they should not produce whenever the marginal revenue is less than the marginal cost. And while we could figure it out with the totals, Marginal analysis means we need to look at marginal numbers. So let's go ahead and find our marginal cost and marginal revenue numbers here. At two units of output, we have a marginal cost of $4 and a marginal revenue of $11. That means producing this unit will actually increase profit for this firm by $7. That's the difference between the marginal revenue and the marginal cost. If this firm produces another unit of output, now we have three units, the marginal cost of that fifth unit is $5, and the marginal revenue brought in is $9. This unit increases profit by $4. Next, we've got our fourth unit with a marginal cost of $6 and the marginal revenue of $7. Since this unit once again increases profit by a dollar, this firm should make that unit as well. If this firm moves on to the fifth unit though, now the marginal cost is $7 and the marginal revenue is only five. Producing this unit would actually decrease profit by $2. And so this firm's profit maximizing quantity is four units of output. That is the highest quantity this firm can produce where the marginal revenue is greater than the marginal cost. And producing the next unit of output will have a marginal revenue less than the marginal cost. 
Now, if this was an AP Microeconomics FRQ, you would want to explain not only why this firm would produce four units, but also explain why the fifth unit would not be produced. So to explain, we would say this firm produces four units of output because $7 of marginal revenue is greater than $6 of marginal cost, but at five units, $5 of marginal revenue is less than $6 of marginal cost. And there you have it. That's what you need to know about different kinds of profit and profit maximizing quantities. If you're ready to practice, head over to ReviewEcon.com and play the profit game. If you still need more help after that, pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.